Hello noble ones and welcome to Metatron's Academy. Today's language is going to be Galician. So what is Galician you ask? Well it's a Romance language, duh, <laughs> that's great information you give on this channel mate, fantastic. It's a Romance language just we've been tackling on this series but it's spoken in Spain. So you say oh it's Spanish then, absolutely not and that's what makes it fascinating. To give you a little bit of insight about this, we need to look at it geographically. So, Galicia is a region in Spain in the northwest. Now, if you think of Spain, then you normally when you go to the west, you see, you imagine Portugal. And Portugal is this strip of land on the west of Spain, but it doesn't go all the way up. So in the northwest of Spain, on top of Portugal, you have the region called Galicia, where they speak Galician, which I believe is pronounced Galago or something like that. Anyways, how different is it? from Spanish, so like Castilian, and maybe even Portuguese, since geographically are so close. But how about we listen? The Galician language. Calego. Normagal. Numbers. Un, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, sete, oito, nove, dez. Very interesting. So as usual, when it comes to, to Romance languages, the numbers from 1 to 10 are really the easiest thing. So this one doesn't tell me much, but I'm noticing that they still seem to have the retracted S that it's common of Spanish spoken in, in Spain. Let's see the good morning, good afternoon, hello, and all of that. Greetings and phrases. Hola, bon dia, boa tarde, boa noite, como te chamas? Wow. So here is when I'm saying... It's actually pretty close to, to uh, Portuguese, in fact, Portugal Portuguese, than it is to Spanish so far. Right now, like the first impact that I'm having, I might change my mind as we continue this, the first th impact I'm having is it sounds a bit like a, a, a language similar to Portuguese, but pronounced in a Spanish way, if that makes sense. Let's continue. Encantado de te conocer. Es un placer verte de nuevo. Adeus. Hola. Hola. ¿Cómo estás? Ben, obrigada. ¿Y tú? Todo bien. Obrigado. That's insane. So they actually say thank you exactly like they do in Portuguese. So I see a strong connection over there. It'd be interesting to have a look at the history of this. I might make a dedicated video. But so far, like the hola and como esta sounds more like Spanish. And then the obrigado. It's such a mixture. This is fascinating. ¿Qué hora es? Aún es media. Obrigado. Que hora es? We can say that in Italian as well. Usually in Italian we tend to prefer, because I'm native Italian for those who are here for the first time, by the way. For, in Italian we prefer to do it in plural form. Que ore sono? But you can say que hora es? Some people do. I think it's more commonly used in plural. De nada. O ascensor? No entiendo. ¿Puedes repetir? ¿Dónde está o ascensor? ¿Dónde está? Yeah, they definitely have the sh, that's characteristic of Spain, Spanish, but also of Portuguese, depending on what type of Portuguese you speak. So uh, this is this is really, really interesting. I'm going to go and look for a video now where we have an actual person who speaks rather than, than like single little words. And let's see, so that we can judge the intonation, overall pronunciation. Let's go. Boa noite, son Luis Gallego, nací en Galicia, eh, na zona interior de la provincia de Lugo, the first thing I'm noticing here that I hadn't noticed in the previous recording is the fact that he has the interdental fricative th. So this makes it a lot closer to Spanish when it comes to the pronunciation. And when I say Spanish, I mean, of course, Castilian, Spain, Castilian, Spanish. Uh, the th usually is changed into a regular S in all of Latin American Spanish varieties. But he did say Galicia rather than Galicia. So uh, let's see how it continues. But then the beginning, it's interesting because he said something, I forgot this, the, the word, but he said something that sounded like good night. Uh, and it was his way to say good evening. In Italian, it would have just meant good night, like when you go to bed. But I would, I still understand that that, by, from the context, that he must be meaning good evening. Eh, tengo 24 años. Eh. I have 24. Uh, I, I am 24, but of course, in Romance languages, we tend to use the verb to have. So literally saying I have 24 years, um, which is how we would say it in Italian. So I, I recognize that. Eh, eh, formo parte de Armada Española, soy marineiro. Para mí, o, o significado de 
estar de casa es muy complicado ya que So I understood the first part when he said that he is in the navy uh, he's part of the of the army he said and then he said I am a a sailor man which might make no sense if you're American when like how could if you If, like if you're a soldier, you're in the army, you're not in the navy. But like in Italy, I would say it's kind of difficult because I used to be in the na in Italian navy. Here is a picture when I was 18. And uh, I would consider myself a soldier, even though that doesn't make sense from an American standpoint. It does make sense. Like the military is a little more encompassing in in Italy. And I imagine it must be similar in Spain if he says that. He does sound like someone from Spain. Oh, significado de... Estar de casa es muy complicado, ya que trabajando en la Armada Española, eh, siendo marinero. It is so interesting that he says, of course, trabajando, which sounds like trabajar in Spanish, but it's actually closer to Sicilian, where we say, because I'm from Sicily, and, it says, and we say trabajando. Trabajando, trabajando, it sounds so close that it's easy for me to understand that he's working. That he was, it's been difficult, I think he's talking about his family probably, I missed a little bit at the beginning, uh, that it was difficult for him because he has to work for, because he was working for the um, Navy. Pues la verdad de que eh, voto mucho de menos a miña casa y e a miña terra, eh, ainda que viaje mucho durante eh, todos estos años que llevo mm, siendo marinero, pues la verdad de que acuerdo me mucho de miña casa, lembro me mucho de meus pais, de... Casa país. It almost now it sounds like a, again it sounds very Spanish, but it also reminds me of accents in even Brazilian Portuguese, like the carioca accent when they have this strong sh, which is not even a retracted s; it's a full on sh, and and because it's connected to Portugal Portuguese and the way they pronounce the s. So of course there is like a, kind of a little triangle you can create, I think, of connection in some points uh, between these three languages. Interesting. Minha familia que son muy importantes para mí. Eh, la verdad de que eh, pienso mucho en la miña tierra. Eh. Penso. Sounds just like Italian penso. So interesting. So there is another one. Uh, it's from a girl this time. Let's see how much we can understand. Hola, buenos días. Chámame Gabriela. Eh, yo no soy galega, ainda que falo galego. Yo falo galego porque yo no Very interesting that she's saying, of course, the beginning I'm understanding, but she says falo ga galego. Rather than hablo, she's using this word to mean I speak that is a lot closer, basically almost the same as Portuguese. So once again, there are some verbs that sound more like Spanish, some verbs that sound more like Portuguese. And uh, the only reason why I know that falar is like to speak in Portuguese is because of the videos that I've been making so far. And I, I gathered that one from context. So uh, very cool. Mis abuelos son galegos. Eh, en los años 60 fueron a vivir en no Brasil. Eh, eh, bueno, o mi padre creció en no Brasil, eh, eh, en Galicia. Eh, como muchos inmigrantes de la época, él es. So she's talking about now. I didn't understand everything, but she's speaking about Brazil, and then she used the word migrante, which means uh, like migrant, like people. Uh, who are immigrating. So it's possible that she's. It's either she's from Galicia and migrated into Brazil or vice versa. I, I, I don't know which one which one is which. Y a Nevian, dependiendo un poco de la situación familiar, de la situación económica. Situación, you see, that one sounds more like Spanish. Fascinating language. I would say so far, it really depends because sometimes the vocabulary shifts into a much more Portuguese uh, situation whereby I would say, oh, this is definitely 60% Portuguese, 40% Castilian. And then there are situations in which that Inverted, if that makes sense. So, um, fascinating stuff. It could be that it's her parents who immigrated. No idea. Pois, cuando mi país era mozo, ya, ya tenía 20 y pocos años, él ya estudara, estaba estudiando medicina en el Río de Janeiro. Okay, so I think she was, or someone, I don't know who the subject is, was studying medicine at uh, Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Eh, mis abuelos volvieron para España y mi país quedó allí. Ali conheceu a minha nai, namorou-se, casaram, e nascimos a minha, minha irmã. Ok, she was speaking about her parents. So it's her parents who moved to Brazil, Rio de Janeiro, to study medicine, then found their lover, because Moroso, it's, it's so interesting, because that one 
is the way they say it in the north of Italy. Not in the south, not in standard, but in the north when they say your, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, they say moroso, morosa. And so I understand it because of that context. And then they got married and they had the children, including her. Y cuando tenía 10 años, pues fuimos todos vivir eh, en Galicia otra vez. Eh, y ahí aprendí o, o galego y o español al mismo tiempo. Que... And then they, I think they moved back to Galicia and that's where she learned uh, both galego, so Galician, and Spanish, so Castilian, at the same time. Gosh, how many languages does she speak? En Galicia, as, uh, los nenos aprenden español en la escuela. Eh, e hoy yo falo cuatro idiomas, yo falo o portugués, que es mi lengua nai, o, o español, o galego, y falo inglés también. So she speaks four languages. She says that Brazilian Portuguese is her first language, but she also speaks Galego, she speaks uh, Castilian, and she speaks English. Fascinating. So um, I do have a question for you then. If you are from Galicia, does she have a Portuguese accent or Brazilian accent when she speaks Galician? Or does she sound just like Galician and therefore she's basically bilingual? I would be... I, I have no idea because I have no training and this is the very first time in my life that I hear the language, but I... I think she, she doesn't have an, a foreign accent when she speaks it. She probably learned it from her parents and she must have moved, moved when she was very young, but I could be wrong. So absolutely, if you speak Galician as a first language, let me know in the comments. So I would say a very interesting um, test, experiment, and uh, I stick to what I said at the beginning. It definitely sounds, and I mean geographically justified, but it definitely sounds like a mix between Portuguese and Spanish. And uh, the pronunciation to me sounds more Spanish, but the vocabulary oftentimes is closer to Portuguese, like with the verb to speak or the thank you and good morning and all of that. Anyways, Fascinating. Very, very interesting language. Please let me know what you thought and how much you could understand and what language you speak, of course, so that we know your perspective and where you're coming from. And as always, thank you so much for joining Metatron's Academy.